My name is Faye, and I work as an administrative staff member at a university medical office. I married a man named Stephen. I thought this would be the start of a second chapter in my life, but little did I know our marital life would end up being so short. I hadn't expected this when we got married. Stephen has been working as a manager at a home improvement store since the time we were dating. My impression of Stephen from when we first met was that he was kind, cared about family, and was decisive. He confidently proposed to me, and I accepted without hesitation, seeing him as a reliable person. Stephen, who had been living with his parents until then, moved out of his home when we got married and began living with me. Both of us have busy work schedules, but somehow we managed to sink our days off, and we're planning our honeymoon. Just talking about it was fun, and at that time, I felt really glad that I married Stephen. However, slowly the atmosphere started changing. The place where Stephen and I lived was a three-bedroom apartment just two years old. It was new, but it was a bit far from the city and wasn't a luxury high-rise, so it was quite affordable. Considering all that, I decided to take the plunge and make the purchase. Living there, there was nothing inconvenient, and Stephen never had a taste for luxury, so you could say it was quite comfortable. One day Stephen told me, my mother and sister want to come over to see our new home tomorrow, so I've invited them. Hearing this, my initial thought was that he should have discussed the date with me beforehand. After all, Stephen would be off work tomorrow, but I had to work. His decisiveness was good, but sometimes he hurt me by not considering my feelings. I'll be at work, is that okay? I asked. Hearing that, Stephen said, well, that's fine. We'll just look around the house a bit, and that should be it. I agreed, assuming that was all there was to it. However, the next day when I came home from work in the evening, the atmosphere in the house was lively. There was a pleasant smell, and when I entered the living room, there were Stephen, my mother-in-law, and sister-in-law. The three of them had prepared food and drinks and were enjoying themselves. What's going on? I blurted out. My mother-in-law, seeming a bit tipsy, greeted me with, Hi, Faye, you're home. Done with work? You've been working hard. My sister-in-law looked at me and cheerfully said, Hey, but wow, this house is amazing. It's not fair that you get to live in such a place. Stephen was joining in the fun and I was the only one in the room who was out of the loop. I was told you were coming for a house tour, but did you plan on having dinner as well? I asked, trying not to upset them, as what was happening was different from what Stephen had told me. I felt a bit upset, but Stephen, with a smile, casually replied, Ah, my mom and sister said they had plenty of time, so we thought, why not have dinner? Even though he said that it was their time, he was considering not mine, and I wanted to express that. It's not like I dislike my mother-in-law or sister-in-law, but I don't want to be on my toes in my own home, however, Stephen said. My dad is not around anymore, and it's always just the two of them. They need a change of scenery once in a while. He said this in a carefree manner. Hearing this, my mother-in-law said, Stephen is such a kind boy. Faye, you should appreciate that you got to marry Stephen, as if I was being taken care of by Stephen. I wanted to retort, I'm working and earning too, you know, but then I thought maybe it's okay to let them have a family dinner once in a while, so I decided to step back. I didn't want any conflict, and they had bought the groceries and prepared the meal themselves. But then my mother-in-law said something that left me shocked. But this fridge is stocked with good meat. High-quality meat really is delicious. I couldn't believe my ears for a moment. My mother-in-law and sister-in-law were clearly using our groceries. The alcohol and the snacks my sister-in-law was eating were exactly the ones we had bought. Ah, oh, you didn't buy these yourself. When I asked, my mother-in-law replied, Well, if you have this much in the fridge, 
There's no need to go shopping, right? It's a hassle to go to the supermarket. She responded without any hint of remorse. And then, to top it all off, she said, I'm tired now, so if you want to eat something, Faye, you'll have to make it yourself. I was genuinely angry at this whole conversation. My emotions were threatening to spill out, but somehow I managed to suppress my anger and respond with a strange smile. Is that so? Well, I'll take care of my portion then. Saying this, I headed to my room. However, it seems some of my emotions may have leaked out. When I closed the living room door, it made a slightly louder bang than I intended. Immediately after, I could vaguely hear my mother-in-law and sister-in-law talking. Oh my, is she always this rough? Is she okay? My sister-in-law chimed in. Despite being in such a nice house, I wonder if Faye won't end up breaking something, right, Stephen? Casually, he responded. I'll remind her later. She's probably just tired from work. And after all that, my in-laws just left without cleaning up. On top of that, Stephen even came to my room and lightly scolded me. Hey, what's with all the irritation? It's not nice to my moms, you know. But honestly, having all this done without my permission and them leaving without cleaning up was too much for me to bear. When I told him this, Stephen tried to pacify me. Well, calm down. This is a one-time thing. I'll take care of the cleaning, just relax. Of course, I wasn't convinced, but I thought it wasn't worth picking a fight over it and managed to suppress my anger. I forcibly thought of this as part of Stephen's family love and managed to regain my composure. We also have our honeymoon coming up in a month, and I don't want to ruin our relationship now. After all, this won't happen again. Now, I just need to think about our honeymoon and lift my spirits. However, that honeymoon turned out to bring misfortune. A month later, we went on our honeymoon. It was a plan to spend three nights in Alaska. I wouldn't have minded going overseas, but Stephen didn't really have a taste for luxury. He said that staying within the country was enough, so we decided on this plan. The hotel we booked was decent, and we enjoyed the cuisine, hot springs, and northern lights, spending wonderful days. And as planned, our delightful journey was coming to an end. We were heading home. I felt a little sad that it was over. We talked about making another plan some day. However, we were just about to arrive home. Suddenly, I remembered something. Come to think of it, I wonder if I locked the bathroom window before leaving the house. We live on the fourth floor of an apartment building, and the bathroom window is small, so I don't think there's any need to worry about a burglar breaking in. However, I remembered it out of the blue, and when I mentioned this to Stephen, he casually responded, It'll be fine. My mother and sister are there. I was perplexed. Ha, huh. my mother-in-law and sister-in-law are at our house now. I didn't hear about this. When I reflexively asked that Stephen, with a calm expression, said, Oh, didn't I tell you? They said they'd clean up while we're away. It's really helpful, you know. Dust piles up after three or four days. He said it so cheerfully. So that's it. He had given the house keys to my mother-in-law without my knowing. When I heard that, I became upset again. From then on, I barely spoke to Stephen and hurried home faster than usual. I couldn't help but worry about what was happening in our house. Upon arriving home and entering the living room, as expected, they were having another party. Moreover, dishes made from food likely taken from our refrigerator were lined up. Oh, you're back. Did you have a good time? My mother-in-law called out to us casually. Of course, I was in no state to give her a proper answer. She said something about cleaning up, but the place was messier than before, and on top of that, there seemed to be more bags for my mother-in-law and sister-in-law. When I saw all that, I could almost hear the last straw breaking inside me. Enough. What are you doing? Please go home. 
This is our house. It's a problem if you keep doing as you please. I couldn't help but blurt out my frustrations. Upon hearing this, my mother-in-law said, Okay, why are you so upset? Argue in no position to say that. This is Stephen's house, so there should be no problem whatever we as his family do. My sister-in-law chimed in with a somewhat arrogant attitude. That's right, Faye. If anything, we should have more right to live here than you. I just can't understand their way of thinking. Hey, I'm paying for this house too, you know. It's my house as well, so I need you to get my permission too. I was filled with a feeling that I didn't want to hold back any more. There was also a concern that if I didn't retort, they would get carried away. But what drove me further was the unexpected Stephen. I said, Hey, Faye, you need to stop. How can you speak to my family like that? We're all going to live here from now on. Don't be so selfish. Upon hearing his words, I was momentarily stunned. Live with these in-laws? Was it decided without my knowing again? When that thought crossed my mind, I couldn't help but retort back to Stephen. So why do you decide on your own without telling me? Can't you consult with me at least once? Who's being selfish here? Don't be ridiculous. The cheerful atmosphere from our honeymoon trip was nowhere to be found. The room had completely turned into a battlefield, but it was Stephen as always who put an end to the tension. Enough. If you hate living here so much, Faye, you can leave, he commanded as if to finish me off. But his words had the opposite effect on me. They called me down. I must have come to realize that I couldn't go on living with these people any more. And if that's the case, there's no reason for me to stick around with Stephen and the others. I could have asked Stephen, who said such a thing, are you sure about that? But I didn't. However, my desire to avoid further involvement was stronger, so I allowed myself to say it casually, all the while grinning. Okay, got it. I'll be out of here in no time. I don't think my mother-in-law and sister-in-law understood why I was smirking, but they'll find out eventually. Afterwards, I quickly packed up only the essentials and left the house. Stephen's parting words were cool off for a while, but I was already cool and had no intention of returning. He seems to think I'm coming back. I contacted my parents, asked to stay with them temporarily, started preparing for divorce, and began looking for a new place to live. Stephen tried calling me a few times, but I ignored him because I was busy with various things. But after about two months, I had settled into my new place. Remembering that I still had belongings at the house I shared with Stephen, I decided to take his call for the first time in a while. And right away, I could tell that he was panicking. Faye, finally, what are you doing? Come back now. He repeated this in a rush. That's right. Stephen thought I was coming back. I remembered, so I answered firmly. No, I'm not coming back. Actually, I've already filed the divorce petition and consulted a lawyer. Let's talk about the property division. He was stunned. Huh, divorce? Please, not that. I can't deal with that right now, he pleaded becoming even more frantic. To be honest, I had a pretty good idea of what was going on. When I asked what's the matter, he replied, I'm broke. I'm already in debt, so come back quickly. Well, that was to be expected. I saw it coming. He must have thought he could afford to kick me out because I would come back. But sorry to disappoint, he was wrong. Stephen wasn't making much to begin with. I think his take-home pay was about $2,000 a month. But the monthly mortgage for the condo we bought was $2,000. So how was he paying for it? I was paying $1,500, and he was only putting in $500. I was earning over three times his salary, so that wasn't a problem. That's why I was covering all the other expenses like utilities and groceries. Even our honeymoon had to be modest because he said he didn't have any money. 
I realized at some point that he didn't lack expensive tastes. He just simply didn't have the income. So once I left, he had to pay for everything on his own. The condo was in his name, and the payments were taken from his account. So once I left, he lost the $1,500 I used to give him every month. Moreover, Stephen's jobless mother-in-law and sister-in-law are living with him. This is certainly going to add to the living expenses. So it was only natural for me to be upset when Stephen made decisions about the house on his own or casually used things from the fridge. With just his salary, they wouldn't last a month. A life drowning in debt is a given at this rate. My mother is furious. She asked me, Why did you kick Faye out? Anyway, come back home right away and do something. I was at a loss for words. As it seems, his mother and sister were under the mistaken impression that he earns a decent living. After all, he does have the title of store manager. But it's a harsh reality that this title doesn't necessarily translate into a high salary. We bought a somewhat decent condo, and they entirely believed that Stephen was the one who paid more. It's pitiful, and there's no other way to describe it but foolish. Furthermore, it turns out that the mother-in-law, having used up all her deceased husband's assets, ended up rolling into my house broke. She and her daughter had been living in a rented apartment, but seemed to have properly terminated that lease. What a family, right? There are moments when I'm mortified to have any familial ties with them. Now, I really want to settle our divorce as soon as possible. Just go ahead with the divorce process with your lawyer, then I'll consider the financial aspects. Upon hearing this, Stephen said, Oh, really? Okay, all I need to do is just filling out the paper with my lawyer and sending back to the court, right? With a voice that sounded as if he had been saved. Our divorce was finalized without any issues. I visited my previous residence to organize my belongings. After I completed the shipping procedures for my luggage, despite his mother and sister being present, Stephen said to me, Phew, you really saved me, Faye. I'm already $10,000 in debt. If things continue as they are, it's going to increase by another $5,000 this month. I was shocked at how quickly he accumulated so much debt. Apparently, his mother and sister have extremely poor spending habits. Despite this, they have no shame and are grinning while relying on my wallet. So I said, Well then, about the money, how about your mother and sister start working? If three people work, it will somehow work out, right? Stephen and his mother were caught off guard by this. Huh? Aren't you going to help us out? What's that supposed to mean? Stephen asked, to which I calmly replied, What's that supposed to mean? That should be my line. Why should I pay for your living expenses? Earn your own share. I didn't say I would pay. I said I would think about it. So I came up with a way for you guys to live here. They all started to create a ruckus, saying, This isn't what we agreed upon. Are you really our daughter-in-law? So I said, I'm not your daughter-in-law anymore, so good luck. I then got into my car and left my former residence. After a while, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law reluctantly started looking for work, but due to their laziness, they didn't get far. In the meantime, the loans keep coming and the living expenses keep piling up. Despite this, they have extravagant tastes, and Stephen's debt just keeps increasing. He eventually borrowed from some dangerous places. It seems that even now, they live in fear of debt collectors. On the other hand, I can finally use the money I've earned for myself and am enjoying hobbies and traveling. When you lead a fulfilling life, it makes you even more motivated at work. One day, a doctor at work approached me and said, You're really glowing recently, Fay." He was someone who had lent me his ear when I complained about Stephen. This was an opportunity for us to start dating.